Hey y'all, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws, and welcome to the second video in my advanced monkey programming tutorial. Uh, in this video, we'll be learning about interfaces, what they are, and how they're useful in your programs. So, now, interfaces are kind of a tricky concept to grasp at first. I know they were for me. Uh, so, rather than try to explain it to you with some definitions right now, I'm going to just, I'm just going to start creating an interface and some classes and explaining explaining it as I go along. So to start in Monkey to create an interface, you just use the interface keyword. Now interfaces are dealing with objects and what you want to do when creating an interface, you want to typically you want to make it a behavior that all the objects that are going to use it share. So in this case, we're going to be creating some objects, and what these objects will all be able to do is die, pretty much. And we're going to come up with a fancy name for these. this interface. We're going to say perishable. So all of your perishables are going to be accessed through an interface. Now when you're setting up these interfaces, you're going to create what are called abstract methods. And abstract methods are just declarations of methods that require its definition to be satisfied somewhere else in the code. So you're not actually going to create the code for this method right now. You're just creating its name pretty much. You're going to create its name, whatever variables it takes, and whatever it's going to return. In this case, we're not going to be passing anything in. We're not going to be returning anything. So I'm just going to call a method that we want to call whenever we want to kill a perishable object. And it's going to be called kill me. That's one of my favorite method names, I'm not going to lie. Now the way you set up the class, the first class we're going to say we're making a game, right? And so in this game we're going to think of some things that can die. And first thing that comes to your head probably is the player, right? Players can always, almost always die. So we're going to create this class player and now to tell monkey that you want to use an interface you're going to use the implements keyword. Now this is different from the extends keyword because the interface is kind of like a layer on top of this class rather than this class being on top of a parent class. And that will this will make more sense as we go along, I promise. Now you're going to actually write the code for this kill me method. And this is another way that it's different from inheritance because with inheritance you only have to define this method once and then all the classes that inherit from it can use that method. But In this case each class that implements this interface needs to have its own definition of kill me or whatever whatever fun whatever methods you set up up here. So in this one we're going to do something just print what you might want to do in your game you know is you're going to send like a message to your engine telling it to reset the player or you're going to if it's a multiplayer game you're going to disconnect that player from the server or something like that in this case we're just going to print you know player is dead and now we're going to create another class for some things that can die and we'll say well enemies you always want your enemies to die and so these enemies are going to implement perishable and in their methods you know typically you're going to want to like delete their object from your you know from your engine once you killed the enemy in this play in this case we're just going to print because that's the easiest thing to do and we're going to say enemy has been killed by a player and now to access these kill me methods through the interface you can there are multiple ways to do it but just for demonstration purposes I'm going to create a function and you say kill or say kill thing because you don't really know what you're killing you don't know if you're killing a player or you're killing an enemy so it's kind of a generic function and what you're going to pass in is something of the perishable type so it's going to be once again you don't know if it's an enemy or a player so you're going to put pass in some generic variable name and give it the perishable type 
and then once you're inside there, you're going to call perish dot kill me. And so what this is going to do is going to call the kill me method of this perishable object, depending on which class it actually is. So it's, you can kind of think of it as like reverse inheritance that we're going from a common object to the children or to the unique objects. And let's go ahead and set up our main function. So we're going to create the player. And once again, you notice I don't have a constructor. I went over this in the last video if you didn't see. You don't need constructors in Monkey if you don't want to. And we're going to create the enemy. And then all you got to do is you call kill thing. And you can pass in a player or you can pass in an enemy. You can pass in anything that implements this interface. So now you might be thinking, well, how is this really useful in an actual development setting? Well, let's say you have two developers working on the same project. And let's say one of them is in charge of writing the actual engine. And the other is just in charge of gameplay. So the way you'll set it up is you don't want to give the gameplay developer access to all the, like, the inner workings of the engine code. So in this case it would be like these methods and the, the code inside these methods. They don't need to know about all that. All they need to know is that they can kill objects. So all they need is an interface into the engine. So in this case the engine contains players and enemies, but all they really need is this interface into perishables. And so what the what the engine developer might do is say they want to add another method to the player and call it, you know, revive me. I want to bring this player back. And you'll do you'll do some code. I'm not gonna actually do the code. So you'll do some code and then instead of you know having to give the gameplay developer all this new code, you just add you just they just add the method here. And your gameplay developer will just see that change and know, okay. I have a new method. Great. I can revive people now. And then they'll go down here and say, I want to create this function now that I have access to this revive. And I want to revive this thing. And it's perishable. And perish. That revive me. And we're going to add, let's add revive thing down here real fast. Now, one important thing to note with these interfaces. As I'm going to show you right now, this isn't going to build. Okay, you'll see that the method revive me must be implement, implemented by all classes that are implementing it. That's the key to these abstract methods. So you see, I've created this abstract method revive me, and I've implemented perishable, but there is no definition of revive me in enemy. And that's, well, you know, that's a big no no with abstract methods. So you have to make sure you're always creating definitions and you say enemy is alive again and that and then now it'll run just fine and now another thing that makes interfaces different from just plain old inheritance is that you can actually implement multiple interfaces so say you want players to be perishable but you also say you know you want to, these players to be able to move around so you'll make an interface called movable and you'll make a meth abstract method move and then with just with the comma and then movable you can add this as an implementation and then your game your gameplay programmer can now move the player around once you add your little move method and then you move the player move player and now so now they'll have an interface to all your perishables and all of your movables. And enemies, of course, they'll probably be movable too. You can just add movable there. And that pretty much covers everything you need to know about interfaces. Uh, I hope you learned something once again. And also email me at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com if you have any questions or lay some comments on me. And I'll see you in the next video.